Hey everybody, this is Jason with Velocity Auto Works. Uh, today we're going to do something different. Uh, we have a, uh, a 2018 SeaDoo RXPX 300 that we're going to do a uh, detail on and also do a uh, oil change to get it ready for the, uh, the summertime. Uh, first, what I'm going to do is show you the tools that we're going to be using and also the oil change kit. Uh, this is something you can easily do at home with these uh, proper tools. So, first off, let's show you the kit. So this right here, I just got this off of Amazon. This is a uh, Sea-Doo oil change kit to make it really easy for you. So you get all the quarts of oil you need and you also get new O-rings and you get a new oil filter. So you get this, you get the new rings to steal your oil filter and then you get three quarts and it looks like a half a quart uh, with the oil change kit. So you need that first of all. So I got this off of Amazon with a uh, prime. It came like in two days. Uh, next thing is, uh, some people might not have this tool. This is for your oil filter. Uh, so to get the oil filter off, what you have to use is a, is, let's get this in the camera, is, if it will focus, well, you really can't see it, but it's a E10 uh, Torx bit to take the oil filter off. So it's sort of a, I guess, a sort of a special tool. Um, but, however, if you don't have this, you can get away with using a, 5 16 uh, socket it will still fit you know it's just not the you know the correct tool for it but it'll still work and it fits snug and it'll get it off there um, you know this Torx bit you can get this at Home Depot I mean they're, they're pretty easy to find but most people don't have it in the tool collection um, so just keep that in mind and you also want some extensions makes it a little bit easier to uh, ratchet out of there then next up is this right here this right here is a uh this is a liquid vac so what it is is this is how you change oil and jet skis so there's no oil drain pole like in a car so this right here you just pump it a couple of times and you stick it down your uh, dipstick tube and it'll suck all the oil out of the uh, the engine so that's how you change uh, oil and wave runners so without further ado let's get this rolling and also i want to mention the uh, the engine it is warm, so on these sea uh you don't want to let it run too long out of water. It will actually uh, burn up the, uh, there's a carbon seal that keeps moisture and water from entering the engine bay. But we did run this one for about 30 seconds, let it warm up, get the oil lubricated, and uh, you know get a little bit uh, thinned out so we can suck it out easier. So let's get this going. All right. All right, so we're, we're looking at the engine bay now. And uh, of course, you know, this is your dipstick. So this is where we're gonna be sucking it out of. So just pull your dipstick out and just set this to the side. And you also wanna make sure you have some towels, uh, you know, to lay your dipstick on. I don't like to lay it on the ground and get it contaminated. All right, so we got the dipstick out. All right, and now, Let's get our liquid vac set up. And this is a pretty simple, simple pump. I believe I got this one off of eBay. You can get them for like, I think like 40 bucks. All right. So this is it, like I said, pretty simple setup. Um, and so what you do is this right here, you close this off. What this does is crimps the, uh, the line. And that way we can start building up pressure to uh, suck the pump out. So this right here, what you do is just pull this Make sure you got a good seal so we'll actually start building up pressure. I've used this thing quite a bit, so it's seen, seen better days. All right. And what you do, of course, make, that, make sure that's clean, but you want to just slide it down your dipstick tube, like so, until you feel it reach the bottom. And we are there. All right. And so just pump it a couple times and you'll start to feel it build pressure. And then we'll release that little crimp right there. All right. And then so we release that. And then you will start to see the oil is coming. You can give it a couple more watts, even uh, pulling it, and then you see all the oil is coming. All right. 
it. So we'll just let that sit there for a second and uh, let it suck all the oil out. And then we'll move on to the oil filter. And it's really as simple as that. So you can save yourself a lot of money by doing it yourself. All right, now that we get all the oil out, let's go ahead and remove this line. Just gonna replace that just for the meantime. And now we'll move on to our oil filter. All right, so on this RX, RXPX 300, it's gonna be right here, your oil filter. Uh, and so this is like a, uh, this is not like your normal car filter where you have like an actual can that you screw on. This one's actually an insert. So what we'll do is we'll take our E10 Torx bit Put it on there and we'll just go ahead and get that loose. Okay, so with that loose, you're gonna get a towel because it's gonna be a little oily. Get that ready down here. And we will Just had it on there a little bit longer. All right, and so let that sort of empty in there for a little bit. And then set that to the side. And if you want, if you're really, uh, you know, tedious about your stuff, you can always put this down there and uh, suck out the remaining oil that's in the uh, oil filter. So let me get this primed up a little bit. So what we'll do is sit that in there and we'll just suck up that residue. And then you can see it just all. Get all that out of there. All right. All right, so we got that all good to go. Now we'll come back over to the oil filter. Let's go ahead and get our new one and the oil ring. Okay. All right, so we got our oil filter uh, assembly. Uh, here's a new one, our old one. So what you're gonna do is you want to remove that filter. Okay, so take that one out. And what we're gonna do is replace these two O-rings right here, okay? So what I usually do and be just very careful because it doesn't really need a whole lot of force. Just get a little flathead screwdriver underneath there. And that O-ring will come right off like so. And then this one right here, just take that one out. And there you go. So the old ones are out. And then what we're gonna do is empty out the rest of that oil in here. Just give this a quick wipe down. Grab our new O-rings. And it's always good. You can, you know, I just just use any type of oil really. Just put some oil on the O-rings. Just keeps them from getting, you know, stuck on there because these engine bays get really hot being under the seat. All right, so we'll put our new O-ring on here. Okay, so we got that first one on. Then 
the uh, fatter one is going to go right there. And look at me, I just about forgot to put some oil on it. So just lubricate that with some oil. And then this one has a groove that it goes into. Let's go ahead and get that lined up with its groove. And I'll show you. But you can see it just snaps, pops right in there. So we got that all set up. Okay, and then I'm putting it just like it came in. So you have the Rotax lettering on there that was facing towards the oil filter cap. So I put that in there like so. Give it a nice snug. And so here's the finished product. All right, so we'll go ahead and throw this back in there. So, I'm gonna go put this bad boy back in here. And excuse the noise. Everybody's getting a little bored of being at home or at home this whole time with this COVID 19 going on. So, we got some ATVs in the background. Okay, then let's go ahead and get this going. And then of course, once we're done, we're going to wipe it up, get this oily residue off everything. And just snug it up. You don't want to over tighten it, it's just aluminum so it can strip out very easily and that will cause a headache. Then I just like to just give this a quick wipe down, clean it all up. Okay. All right, and here comes the fun part. Uh, so just look at your oil cap and we'll be able to put some fresh oil on there and I don't know about you but it's always satisfying seeing nice clean clear oil going into an engine so uh, let's go grab a funnel real quick and we'll get this going and then we'll check the level on the dipstick all right so of course with this watercraft uh, we're only using uh, genuine c products on it uh, so they're XPS lubricants uh, so that's we're gonna put in this at watercraft one thing you have to be very mindful of these watercraft, uh, they run at very high temperatures and this one's supercharged. Uh, so it has a lot of, uh, you know, bearings and stuff that oil needs to get to. So you can't use just regular automotive oil uh, for a jet ski like this. You need to just use the OEM oil or something that's gonna meet their uh, criteria. Uh, one thing though, you know, I've done a lot of wave runners from Yamaha and their oil change kits include a funnel. So see dude, it'd be nice if they included a little uh, paper funnel for you to use. But uh, without further ado, let's go uh, check this out. We got the uh, funnel already in the, the oil cap and here comes the best part fresh oil for the summertime of course today uh, here in Atlanta Georgia it is actually uh, a little chilly it was getting uh, really nice mid 80s but here we go look at that So that's one quart. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put two quarts in. And uh, you know, these, these jet skis, you don't wanna overfill them with oil. So even though it's only two quarts, I just like to just go ahead and check on the dipstick to see where it's at. And uh, the, like I said, the kit comes with three and a half quarts, um, but you definitely don't wanna overfill it. Um, and funny thing is, uh, I've heard on the internet, uh, you know, when you start upgrading these jet skis, when you run less oil in them, it makes them uh, uh, run a lot faster. So I don't know if that's true or not, but I have read that. Let's 
Let's just go see where we're at, just to be on the safe side. Just clean that dipstick off. Reinsert it. And just as I was expecting, nothing is showing on the dipstick just yet. All right, so this will be our third quart. All right, so that's three quarts. And what I'm going to do is actually fire it up and get oil circulating in the oil filter and then we're going to check it that way we can just get the uh, level just right. So now we just fired it up and got the oil and the oil filter get all circulating. We've let the engine sit just for a second and then we'll check where the oil level is at. And let's wipe that off and get a new clean reading. But it's right there in the midway mark. Um, so we're just gonna add a little bit more. There's one thing with these skis, you don't wanna overfill them with oil because you'll actually get oil in your uh, intercooler. It will sort of just have, be like a blow by. Um, so we'll just add a little bit more and then we should be good to go. And then we'll move on to uh, getting this thing all shined up and ready for the uh, summertime. We got it all maintenance uh, checked and uh, now we'll get it all shined up. All right, so it's about right there. So that is perfect. Like I said, you don't want to overfill it. So we're gonna leave it right there. All right, so we just wrap that up. Now let's go uh, dispose of this old oil and uh, we dispose of it in a container. And uh, take that out. And let's go take our funnel and uh, let's check this out.
that's that. All right, we'll wrap this up and then we'll get on to uh, cleaning this thing up. So I'm gonna show you all a useful tool. So come over here. So you'll notice when you wash a jet ski, you always get a ton of water in the foot wells. And uh, it's hard to get it out. I mean, you can use a leaf blower and try to blow it out. And you know, just it will make a huge mess. One thing, these things right here, you can get them on Amazon. These are a little uh, pump. So you just type in like a, uh, you know, a, you know, a fuel pump on Amazon. I believe it might pull it up. Uh, we'll try and put it in the link. But what you do, it's just simple. It just runs off some batteries. Just stick it in there. Point this over here, and then you know, just pump all the water out of the foot wheel. So that's a real easy way to do it. So I've been doing it this way for a while now. And uh, we'll just remove all the water out of the foot wells. And then we'll get a leaf blower and blow this thing dry. Yeah, this is a really cool tool. All right, and then we'll go over to the next foot well. And this thing was like 15 bucks, but it makes your life so much easier when it comes to cleaning a jet ski. I used to have to like sponge it out and it would just take forever. All right. Now I'm gonna show you how you can blow dry this thing. And I'm not talking about with just any leaf blower. 
This bad boy right here is the Echo PB8010. So uh, this thing right here, it has over a thousand CFM. So I mean, you can literally blow a hole in the ground with this thing. One thing though, when using this, make sure you use ear protection. This thing will literally make your ears ring. It's so loud. But here, we'll do a cold start and then we'll uh, blow, blow dry this jet ski clean. So we got it all blow dry, so I'm just going with a towel. Let's get the excess moisture off of it. Uh, my partner has probably uh, lost his hearing now after using that blower, but hey, he'll get it back. What? <laughs> 